my goodness. Hello and wh what? Craig was so loud, he ear-reaped me. Oh my I wasn't God. expecting it. Okay. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Knuckleheads Podcast. I am your host, Andy. And I'm your co-host, Mandy. You could have said other hosts, but sure. Co-host. Um, okay, co-host. <laughs> co-host, Mandy. Um, honestly, um, I know we usually do a recap of the previous episode, but... Um, it's I don't been know, Mandy, so long. <laughs> I, mean, I don't remember. Honestly, our previous... Uh, podcast just i'll just do a quick recap because yeah. i briefly remember it um we we went on a little bit of a tangent about call of duty in the beginning um and some other i forgot what the other thing was we just kind of went we got sidetracked for a bit um but the majority of the episode was about bridgerton talking about what we thought of it um and that was a bit a long time ago that was actually like two months ago um it's about squid and game then, right and then and then at the end we talked about squid game yeah heck yeah um so it's basically those two shows we we really focused on. Um, this is the season finale. Uh, I know it's not doesn't seem as huge as we wanted it because unfortunately our special guest Broccoli Man uh, was not available for this recording session. That is okay. Uh, we still have things that we want to talk about. Um, most importantly, our book club segment. Um, I finally got Amanda to read, <laughs> um, but she went above and beyond and went. All the way up until the book is sectioned by part one and part two, she got to part two of the book. Um, yes. And then I had to catch up quickly to get there. So we are basically 36 chapters in now. So we figure we're going to do bigger chunks than three chapters. Um, or, or maybe it'll just be however many chapters. It might not be a set amount each time. Yeah. Um, but we're up to chapter 36. Um. I want to get your initial thoughts, Amanda. What do you think so far like, of the beginning with uh, Paul Sheldon? So, um, I mean, I feel pressured. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, do you want me to talk first? I mean, like, do you, wh like, what do I think of his character? Is that what you're asking me? Or well, just in the like... beginning, like, what are you feeling towards him in the beginning? Like... I mean, based off I've, what he's gone through. I mean, you could you could talk about specifically what he's gone through um, before giving your analysis, just so it makes more sense. Since uh, I, I would say, I probably feel like not pity, but I feel bad for him. Obviously, mm. I mean, this woman's pretty much like torturing him when she doesn't get her own way, or like if he quote unquote makes her unhappy or angry, even though he's literally done nothing. And mm -hmm. then she just like full on, full on leaves him for like two days without any food or water, and he ends up drinking his own piss and like no medicine or anything. Like, ugh. did he drink his own piss? Like, I don't yeah. remember. He did. Yeah. So yeah. it was when uh, she left, and he was like really thirsty and had to pee, so he like took his blanket or something, and he like peed in it and then drank that. I don't really remember that. I mean, again, I, I was like, I probably read that a long time ago, and then just recently I came back to read it again. Um, yeah, that is fucked up. Um, I think also what you're missing is the part about how she got him addicted to Norville, um, and then leaving him hours at a time purposely to suffer without his yeah. pain medication. Like, now he's become dependent on it, and now he's just in agony for hours. Yeah. That's, like, totally fucked up. And, like, I hope we find out more of her past. Um, because she clearly has she some to... medical background. Yeah, but, again, there's a whole thing with, um... A court, it was in Denver? Huh? I think they're in, they're in Colorado or Denver. No, 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 they're in Colorado, but there's a whole thing where she was said... And I was, like, uh, yeah... In the in court in Denver or oh, something. Oh, that that was that was just like a whole made up scenario he he had in his head. No, that but was... she said something about it. Okay, so yeah, so here, um, she said something about. Do you think that when they put me up in the stand in Den, and then that's when she cut off? So it was in Denver. But he recalled okay. her saying that. So then that's when he started thinking about up on the stand when they put me up on the stand in Denver. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth? So that's when he started hallucinating but she did imply that she went to court for something um okay but, but i mean not they, related 
not related to him getting kidnapped, but probably something else. No, no, no. That's probably how. That's probably what happened. She got in trouble, probably in the medical field. Got yeah. lost her job and kind of went crazy. She's probably was crazy before. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna assume that we um learn more about it in the second part. Um. But yeah, the when he recalls her saying that, that is in chapter. I don't even know. Uh, what is this chapter eleven? Okay. So, but that happened right after the whole first thing where she forced him to drink like the soapy water with the yeah, rag. Yeah, oh, I'm now I'm I was just kind of skimming some pages, and um, it's kind of coming back to me a little bit. I kind of remember some of this. It, I, yeah. I really shouldn't have taken this long uh, of a break because um, cause the thing is where I left off was kind of like at a, at a point where I didn't feel like as much happened. I forgot about all the, the weird shit yeah. she did in the beginning. Where I left off and I started reading again recently was when she made him burn the book, uh, his yeah. book Fast Cars, the manuscript. Um, so I kind of like said, oh yeah, I remember that. And then I just didn't think about anything that happened before then. I, I yeah. thought everything before that was kind of tame, but I forgot that she did some worse shit to him. Yeah. So, yeah, this was in Chapter 9 when she was going on about how, like, the book Fast Cars had profanity. And she said, Yeah. And then I do... And then do I go down to the street to the bank and say to Mrs. Bollinger, Here's one big bastard of a check, and you better give me 50 effing dollars just as effing quick as you can. Do you think that when they put me up there on the stand in den, and then she cuts off? But so, I wonder why. I wonder why in that sentence she was comparing being put up on the stand. I want she was to talk about when I'm on the stand, I don't talk like that. Yeah. Or, but it was just like, why even bring that up? <laughs> I think she, because she obviously has some mental problems that she got uh, kind of heated in the moment. I mean, because of the book and the profanity, she like threw what was it soup and then blamed it on yeah. him for making her angry and then forced him to drink the muddy yeah. soap water. And you know what's funny? Like around that same time, I I just quickly like skimmed the part where she said, "I love you, Paul." Yeah, I know. Like, I saw that too, and I was like, Bleh. "That was at the end of chapter ten. Yeah. I love you." And I'm just like, after doing <sighs> all that shit, making him drink the dirty water and just say, "I love you." Yeah, <laughs> that's so fucking it, weird. It's gross. <laughs> it's so bad. I love you, Paul. And then for him in a about ten chapters later to be like, "My favorite nurse has two ends in it." <laughs> yeah. Uh. Um, okay, so pretty much, he's tormented, she makes him burn his book in order to get his pills, Yeah. um, and he does it, and unfortunately he doesn't have a copy, so burning this manuscript, that's the end of that, um, he, he kind of regrets it, but at the same time, he's, like, battling with himself, thinking, like, it's worth it, um, and then he keeps hypothesizing, like, ways that she's gonna get caught, um, he keeps thinking, like, someone's gonna find my car. Then he envisions yeah. how, why no one's found this car, and, like, how snowplows covered it in snow, and no one's gonna see it. But then, like, surely when spring comes, and then, like, then he pictures, like, how, what what's gonna happen when the cop comes into the house talking to Annie, and then maybe the cop will get suspicious. Yada, yada, yeah. making up all these scenarios. Honestly, just to pass the time, too. All because of a book. This is all because of a book. Yeah, I know. That's crazy. What were the chances that she was going to find him that day and have to be this psychotic person? Like, that's just insane. I mean, he says that, too. He's like, if I was any other person, what would she have done? Yeah, probably actually help. I don't know. But, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so pretty much for people, if you haven't read it uh, thus far, that's pretty much what's happened. Um, and then towards the end of this part one, uh, she pretty much like says like, "All right, you're gonna you're gonna write me uh, my own misery novel, like the yeah. Return of Misery." And the way the series ended, because he was moving on from the Misery series, he at this point he was like, he wrote I think four books about her, and he, yeah. he was, or five books, and he was just like, I, "I'm kind of tired of writing about the same character." Yeah, he killed her off in the last book. And Annie didn't really like that. And she's like, oh, I don't think you actually killed her. So he's basically saying, she's basically telling him, write a story where she's back. 
And the whole thing was, the way he quote-unquote killed her off was that she died giving birth, which, according to him, uh, according to how, like, the novels were written and the time period they're written in, that was a common thing. So he technically didn't kill her, she just died giving birth. Right. So, but Annie likes to say that that he did. Yeah. Of course. And in a way, I guess you can argue, yeah, he did, because he wrote the story. Um, but, yeah. Um, so, you know, in Sheldon, Paul Sheldon's mind, he's like, how the hell am I going to do that? But, you know, she's delusional, so probably believe anything. Um, he kind of, like, starts trying to be a little sassy back, trying to gain some confidence with her. And it starts kind of working up until the point where, um, he goes and says, he says, I'm on your side. The minute he said that, that's when he lost all the momentum he gained. Yeah. Because the paper, the paper, he kind of convinced her a little bit, but then when he went a little too far by saying, I'm on your side, because that, that triggered her. She's then she's like, no one's been on my side. And then, yeah, if he just stopped the argument at the part of the bleeding the paper, that might have been it, and that could have worked on its own. But, uh, yeah, like, because, like, the type of paper the ink could have bled through, which is an understandable thing, and that's why I think she was kind of starting to see what he was saying, but then when he, he said those words, it triggered her. Um, yeah. And then that's when she punched his leg, and then he lost all confidence and everything. Yeah. Um. You know, I feel like I have seen the movie version of this book before, because again, I don't remember if it was this book, but there was a scene, and I remember specifically, it was kind of like the same thing. She kidnapped this dude, and what happened was she had him like tied up to the bed, and then there was something wrong with his legs, and then he took, she took like a mallet. And slammed it down on his ankle so he couldn't go anywhere. Yikes. Yeah. So we'll see if that's to come. But we'll there was see. also an older guy in the um, movie that I watched, so I don't remember. But mm-hmm. we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know, Paul, after the. So he basically got into a car accident in the beginning. That's how Annie got him. Like yeah. when he was unconscious, she must have found him. Um, and his legs are shattered, so he can't walk. So he's yeah. bedridden, and she's taking care of him. Um, but up to the point where we just said she punched his leg, um, she just got him a typewriter and a wheelchair. Um, so she punched his leg while he was in the wheelchair, um, threw the typewriter on the ground, and basically said, fine, I'll get your stupid paper. Any other requests? Who, like, basically accusing him of procrastinating and saying, you know, I, like, you know, I'm not stupid, blah, blah, blah. Like, uh, you can't, you know, you, no, you don't trick me or whatever kind of crap. I mean, you also gotta figure, like, she has to be a strong woman to pull a fucking grown-ass man out of well, a she, car. He said that, too. He yeah. said, like, she's gotta be, sh- not just that, but also the, he said, like, uh, picking him out of the up chair. out of the wheelchair. Yeah. And, like, you know, his lower half is dead weight as well, which is even, like, makes him a little heavier. Um, but yeah, she, she's a big, burly woman. And also, she lives on a farm, takes care of farm animals, I'm sure. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Um. And then, like, the part where also it says that she, um, she, like, has to make, uh, make appearances look oh, nice. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, because that gets to my next point, because, like, before the incident where he gets punched in the leg and, um, he tries to kind of, you know, be more confident... Um, he's looking out the window, looking at the barn, and he see how neat the barn is. Um, and then later, after he getting punched in the leg, she leaves him alone, and he needs his, uh, Norville pills, and he basically tries to get out of the room. The door's locked, he picks the lock, uh, with a bobby pin that fell when she stormed around the room, and got into the bathroom where the pills were, and he got the pills, uh, somehow. And then he saw the living room because he said, oh, maybe I could, like, call for help. And we went to go call for help. He got to the telephone, and the telephone didn't work. And he, now we don't know for sure what happened, but he, like, assumed that she did something to the phone on didn't, by the wall. Yeah, didn't he look at, like, the wire? And it was just kind of, like, 
glued in. It wasn't like it looked like it was plugged in, but there was something. I don't know if it was definitive or he was just making an assumption that she did something I with glue. S- um, I, I, I remember the whole thing with the glue. I just don't know if he yeah. actually saw it or if he said I can picture Annie Wilkes doing uh, this to the telephone, like uh, taking it out of the yeah. wall, filling it with glue. And, and then that's when the quote of uh, keeping up with appearances came back because he yeah. figured he probably he probably said I could see her doing something like that because it wants she wants to make it look like she has a telephone to like if any company comes over make it look very normal but in reality this phone doesn't work Hold and on. he said like um, she probably will pay uh the phone bill still and uh, even though yeah. it doesn't work which is even crazier to think of but yeah so it's here on page ninety seven um. It just says he traced the phone cord with his eye, saw the small square module on the baseboard, saw that the jack was plugged into it. Everything looked in perfect working order, like the barn with its heat tapes, like you mentioned with the barn. Uh, Keeping up appearances is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Um, He closed his eyes and saw Andy removing the jack and squeezing Elmer's glue into the hole in the module. So, yeah, he's imagining He closed his eyes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so but because me. because of that quote, he could see her doing something like yeah. that. We don't know if that's exactly what she did. She could have just cut the line somewhere else. But yeah, yeah, he's basically saying she's crazy enough to have done something like that with the glue, make the phone yeah. look like as if it's in working order, and still pay the phone bills even though it's a busted phone. I mean, and he even mentioned like if everyone thinks she's crazy, doesn't like her, no one's gonna call her anyways. That is true. So exactly. So and she also lives like in a she rural lives on the moon. era. Yeah, and yeah. her neighbors. They, I don't get the constant bringing up of the neighbors that they don't like her. Well, he said he claims he heard her talk about them one time, maybe when he was like in and out of consciousness. Yeah. Um. So he so he probably brings it up constantly just because again he that's all he can think about that's all he really knows about her thinking that these neighbors probably won't care about her anyway but like he must have heard her like say something i mean if you hear uh uh reading back like any you know judge the the person that got the typewriter too calling her a whore and whatnot um that sold it to her yeah right so she's very judgmental about other people um so Yeah. yeah it's no kidding that the neighbors don't like it but but what i'm trying to say is She's probably talking shit about her neighbors, and since she always has, like, a disapproving nature of people, um, she might have just been talking to herself one day, and he, you know, might have been, like, in and out of consciousness and just heard what she said. Uh, but yeah, she probably has no one to call or contact, and no one probably wants to contact her. So, yeah, it doesn't really need to uh, have the phone working. But the end of the book really got me when he was... Um... End of the book? You mean end of the... Part? The first part, yeah. Um, when he was rolling around and everything, and almost didn't get back into the room. Yeah, that Ugh. was that was that gave me so much anxiety when I was reading it. Like even even like when he said, "Oh, I'm gonna go venture out into the living room," and he's fighting with his mind, and the mind's like saying, "You're yeah. pushing your luck," and that's what I'm like, "Yeah, you're pushing your luck." <laughs> like just, I mean, but at the same time, like, yeah, you should go investigate the phone. But the minute the phone was not working, I was like, "All right, get your ass back in the room." But, but that's the thing too, he didn't even try it. Well, he said it, it, usually when you pick up the receiver, if you don't hear it go boom, like that, that uh, means it's dead. I, mean, like, I don't know how rotary phones work. I mean, so. we used to have we used to have a rotary phone. I want a rotary phone. They're so. But cool. even even if uh, a house phone, uh, that we have, like if you press the on button, if you don't hear it make that noise, that buzz. Like even at even uh That's, at Staples, yeah. If you, I mean, I know you didn't like making phone calls, but if you ever picked up the receiver, you would hear like a buzzing sound. Yeah. If you don't hear true. that buzzing sound before you dial, it, it's dead. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, um, yeah. So, the part of him getting back in the room, I was getting so. I mean, I knew he was gonna make it back in there, but I was getting so anxious and. You know, he managed to get through, and then, like, the fucking part with getting the lock fixed, like, I'm like, oh my god, come on. Like, she's in the house, and I'm surprised she didn't hear the door close. I mean, he could, again, he could have been overthinking, thinking that it sounded as loud as it did, but it might have not have. But 
the whole time I'm reading that, I'm still thinking, like, you know, he's backing up in the room. Okay, finally, he got in the room. The door closed. But I'm like, the Norville is still in his lap. It's still in his lap. But the book's not mentioning it. I'm like, why? Maybe maybe I'm just – maybe I'm overthinking. And then, like, the last sentence of, the cha- of that particular chapter was um, – there was one glaring issue that he's still still holding a Norville in his lap. I'm like, yeah. I knew it. I'm like, oh man. And then the last two chapters of this part was literally Annie coming into the room, somehow not noticing the pills. Somehow Paul is playing this off. And was because she noticed that his hands were covering them. Yeah. But he played it off as he, as if he had to like really go to the bathroom. So then she gave him the pan to pee. And then during that, he, um, like, slipped well, up in his back pants, like, the back of his pants. Well, when she went to go get the pan, he put him in his pants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, when she said, I'm gonna pick you up and put you in the bed, he said, I'm not ready yet. And when she walked out the room to take care of some of the crap she bought, then he stuffed it under the mattress. I still don't get, like... I don't get how this mattress looks, but he was saying something about where he was stuffing it. She wouldn't see it when changing the sheets. I don't know how that's possible, but it's probably like far underneath. Um, but maybe, yeah. But man, that was that was so intense reading that, and like, I I I'm open about this. Like, I don't like suspense and like this. Like in a movie. I get kind of like squirmish and I kind of like cover my eyes and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. always assuming like the worst is going to happen. The fact that I was reading this and I was getting that feeling, I could only imagine watching the movie and what it's like. Like I would probably yeah. be even worse. I, I was mean, like, I can't, I can't believe these words were actually making me feel this way. I mean, we just went and saw the black phone a few weeks ago and you were a little squirmish during that. Yes. <laughs> I didn't like, and then of course the one time when I wasn't prepared, the freaking lightning scared oh, the yeah, shit the out thunder. of me. The thunder and lightning and the kids appearing for that split second, I wasn't ready. And then I was like, ah. I don't think anyone was. I think it's probably like jump scared out the whole theater. But I know yeah. it was funny. But yeah, um, Paul Sheldon's been through a lot. And oh, and then that was the other thing we missed. Uh, when you were talking about the barn and the heaters, uh, she was saying that I might not need them much longer. So Paul got a little excited about that because he's like, "Oh, so it is close to springtime." Because b- right before that, he was having visions of potentially it being spring and the snow melting around his car. And he's like, "Surely someone will find my car then." But I, I wonder. I don't know, but I wonder if maybe Annie somehow managed to hide his car too which might prolong this but i don't know i wouldn't put it past her but if the car was completely flipped over and like and damaged at that bad to the point where he was like knocked out and needed to be pulled out from his car i don't know how she would even salvage that well let alone especially if it was on like a highway or a road then well, he went off the road. I don't know how steep the hill was that he went down. But what I can envision, if it's not that terribly far and not terribly steep, is she has a cheap Jer- Cherokee with a plow thing attached to it. If she could use that to kind of flip the car back over, maybe. I don't know. But then it's again, how would, how would no one? Yeah, how would no one see her do it too? Yeah. I don't know. But then, I mean, again, she's probably crazy not thinking about this. If the car was left there, wouldn't she have realized that, like, you know, eventually the car is going to get discovered? I don't know. Unless she was smart and took the license plates off it and took the registration out of it. So then if the car is discovered, you can't trace it back. Yeah, but then, like he mentioned, he's missing now, and he's, like, what's considered to be, like, a famous person. So people are going to obviously notice that. Right, he was going back and forth on that. He's like, am I considered famous? I guess I am. You know, I, people will miss me, or people, someone will report me missing. I yeah. wonder who will report him missing, because he's not, he's not married. 
I don't know if his I know his dad passed away. He mentioned it, but I don't know about his mother. Maybe his like his publisher or editor or some someone that he works with with the making the books might because like who's gonna report him missing? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And did, did anyone even know that he was in Colorado before he went missing? Because he normally I mean, is he in New York. To someone at a bar, right? And that's when you're um. In the very beginning. I think he did. I, I don't he, remember. He mentioned he was, like, at a bar or something. And the guy well, was he, was, like, he was drunk when he was driving, I think. That's true. He might have. Um, and and Because he heard about the snowstorm. He thought he could beat the snowstorm, and then it started snowing. And then, yeah. And then he crashed. I don't know. I, I don't said remember. To Tony that the storm is going so... Is this Annie talking? It might the be. Town. There's a character in the Fast Cars book named Tony. Yeah. Would... And she was um, complaining about his language. Oh, poop. I said I better get on my horse and ride. I'll stay yep. until you can, Ms. Wilkes. That's so, Ms. Annie. Wilkes. That's Annie. So, yeah. So, this is Annie talking about maybe how she found him. Well, she did explain how she, um, Came the day she, the day she found him, yeah, that she was in town. Yeah, <clears throat> but that was but at, was him describing how he got into the crash before that or after? I don't remember. Neither do I. It's okay. Um, I'm just curious to see where this goes. I just looked at like the first page of part two, uh-huh. and it looks like it's the beginning of what he's written. Oh, for, so like. Uh, yeah, so like, I think some time has passed, and it's like probably like the next day, and he's probably y- he used the typewriter already. So yeah. I believe it's um, let me just see where my bookmark is. Yeah, Misery's Return by Paul Sheldon for Annie Wilkes, chapter one. So it's like a couple pages. It's the really chap- the fir- it's yeah. the first chapter in part two. It's like yeah, it's like three pages, oh, three and no. a half pages. There's script in this. Well, he had, a, he had to write in whenever there was an N, because the typewriter's missing an N. That's true. No, 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 like, there's actual, like, if you look at chapter 28, it's it's very short, but it's all on script. <laughs> um, chapter 28 of part two? Yeah, I'm just kind of scrolling through to see, like, how long. Some of the oh, yeah, chapters so it, are a little longer. It looks um, like you occasionally get a chapter where he wrote another chapter in the book. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be interesting, though. And then at the end... Oh, there's a part three, stuff. I think. Is there? Yeah. What what page for you? Wait. Um. Because I see the chapters reset. Hold oh, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Uh, I see it, I think too. it was page 230... Uh, 200, 226. 226 for you? Part three. Look. Dang. That's crazy. I think there's also a part four. Oh, yeah. Mine's on two. Yeah. That's interesting. So, I went, is this like four separate books in one? or No, oh, no. And, it's the same book. And then there, I don't know if you have it. On, two, on 324, it says the end. Um, but there's a part there's four still, like, at the very end. Yeah. Interesting. Misery, a novel. No. That's what it says, a novel. Yeah, so I'm excited to see where this goes. Yeah, me too. And then we're, um, we'll probably watch the movie after. And then yeah, and then we'll talk compare. about that. Yeah. And then we'll read another Stephen King book. Because I have plenty. Yeah, my imagine, mom's got more. Imagine just trying to read, uh, what is it called? The Walking? That thing's fucking huge. Is I can read called? it. The Walking? I'm not the Walking Dead, Google. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Oh, is it called The Long Walk? Maybe. It's like, uh, such a f- thick book. Your thick book. No, this can't be. Because this says it only has 384 pages. The one I have is a lot more than 384 pages. <sighs> but yeah, it's a good book overall. Yeah, so far, good book. Um, 
kept me on my toes, and I'm excited to read more. Me too, me too. We'll try to keep up with um, reading this, and hopefully uh, get back at you with another episode soon, talking about that. Yeah. Um, let me see how much time we've been talking. I think we've been talking for 35 minutes, okay. Um, Big chunk where we uh, had to cut out, because it was just us looking through the book. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to cut that out. Yeah. Um, so, the next, in... so, do you want to talk about the next topic? Um, the collections? Or was there, yeah, or is there something else you want to talk about? No, first? I'm good to talk about collections. Okay. So, to... collections, um, these are things that we collect slash want to collect, and we'll talk about why we collect them, what, what we find interesting about them. Yeah. Um, you want to go first? Hello. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Did you not hear me yawn? No. So oh. Mike did a good job of cutting you off. <laughs> it was a very loud yawn. Um, yeah, so right now, I would say my main thing that I'm... Because I what I like to collect is um, a very expensive collection. And I collect them because I like how they look. And they're Disney. And they are lounge fly bags. So... Mm. If you you've probably seen them, if you've ever been to Disney World, you know everyone's carrying the little Minnie Mouse sequin bags. Um, you know they have the most popular ones, probably the rose gold one. You know, but uh, they make a bunch of different ones. So I have spent up. To, I think the most expensive one I had um, is a. It was t- about two hundred and thirty-five dollars. Is the most expensive one I have. Right. Uh, um, the second most expensive one I have, I think, was two hundred. We don't. We don't have to go down the list. No, I was just thinking of my top two. The other ones I usually play like normal price for, but the reason um these two were so expensive is because well, first of all, the one was the Funko Pop Jack Skellington one, so they only had a certain amount of those released, and then the second one they don't make anymore, so. That's why they were so expensive. But Interesting. Yeah, and then I'm also trying to collect like enamel pins. I want to get like a blackboard. Um what? Like you know like the like little pins you can like put on ba- bags and stuff and collect. Uh-huh. I want to uh start collecting those cuz I have a few, but um I want to get like a cork board sort of thing, like a nice big black cork board and just kind of put them all in there and collect them. And I think that'd be okay. cool. Yeah, if you have the space for it. Yeah. Um, okay. Anything else? Do you like collecting? Um, I used to collect air fresheners. <laughs> when I was younger. Yeah. I had like 50 of them and you would keep, I would keep them in the garage. Whenever you went into the garage, it smelled good. I mean, it's air fresheners. Yeah, I mean, like the little car ones specifically, the ones you like hang in your car. You should use them in your car. My car smells amazing. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, any any other things you like to collect or used to collect? That you I mean, just of? like Jack Skellington, anything Jack Skellington, pop okay. up song stalls, plushies. Pop Funkos, you don't have that many, and the ones I, you have are of Nightmare Before Christmas. I know. I like the Pop Funkos. I'd be down to collect more of those, but those are also like pretty expensive. Yeah, I mean, not as expensive as the backpacks, but I thought I would want to collect them, but then I realized, nah. I, mean, I don't know. They're cute. They they are, but uh, I don't know. And it just like they just take up space, and it's just like I don't know what to do with them. I mean, obviously, when you have a collection. Of course, it's going to take up space, but they're just the one thing that, I mean, they seem cool at first, but then just, like, after a little bit, I'm like, I don't even know why I got this. <laughs> it's just to look at for decoration. Yeah, I, I suppose. I don't know. It it doesn't, uh, I don't get as excited about it, um, as some of the other things that I collect, but. Yeah. What are some things you collect? Okay, um. So one of the one of the two major things I, I like to collect lately 
have been uh, rings. And I guess the reason why I like rings is because, I mean, one, I currently don't have one, but you could get a display case for them. Uh, but what I like about it is that you can wear them. So it's not like the Pop Funkos where you get them, you put them on display, and then that's it. Um, the rings, I could actually like go out in public with them and, diff- and have different combinations as I get more and more of them. Um, and I, I, I just like wearing them. I think it looks pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is uh, mechanical keyboards. Now, this is a, an expensive hobby that I've recently got into. Um, I've been buying boards, building them, um, and I, I I love doing it. And again, like the rings, once I build it, it's not like something that just goes on a display case and I never see again. You could put them on display cases, but I also love using them. And I like switching between the boards I've made. Uh, and I'm hoping soon to ma- buy another one uh, from and make it from scratch. And again, like getting a, a board, some switches, and whatnot, and doing it yeah. all over again. Um, but like I said, it's expensive, so I, I don't want to do it too often. But I make your I, banana board. Yeah, I want to buy um because recent. Right, I'll tell that real quick. I recently bought um like a seventy five percent board. And uh, I had these keycaps from Christmas I got, and I didn't have a board to use it on. So I put them on this board, and I wanted to change the keycaps on my second board. So I bought these banana, or I got them for my birthday. Amanda got them for me, these banana yes. keycaps. I know you might think, oh, banana keys are so stupid. But um, it was a black board that currently had uh, a very bland keycap uh, covering on it, uh, or design. And I think the banana ones were nice to go with the black uh, board. Um, and I like some of the, the little um, novelties that came with it. And uh, the only thing that I don't like about it are the current switches on them. I, I took clicky switches and I try to make them into tactile switches with, with the right amount of lube. Um, I wasn't very consistent, though, across lubing all the switches. And it doesn't sound... It, like It's it's an interesting sound. Um, it doesn't sound as loud as a clicky, but it still has like a ticking sound. Um, and it's, it's okay. It's like a typewriter ish sound. Um, but I got some tactile switches for my newest board and I like how that sounds a lot better. So I think I'm just going to get rid of these clicky switches and actually get some really good, uh, linear switches. Cause even though I like the tactiles that I got, um, I don't like, I still prefer linears most. And I think that board, I want to make it, uh, have linear switches in it. Uh, so I just got to buy some new switches, lube them up, and switch them out into that board. Um, and it's like, I don't know, I just I just find that whole process fun. It's tedious, but it's fun to me. And you could come up with some cool designs with the keycaps and whatnot, I feel. Um, get some different color schemes going and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and get some different sounds out of them, too. Like, more thocky, more, more um, uh, clacky, or whatever. I um, like thock. Yes, I built Amanda a keyboard. I got some decent thock on her board. Thock. Um, I have like a quite a few other things, but these things aren't as um big for me anymore. Well, one of them is, but the rest aren't. Um, so like I used to uh collect uh faded superhero graphic tees. Um, I know that's kind of lame, but they're, they're basically like uh, I have one I think for Captain America, super uh, Superman, Batman, um, the Flash, um, a couple others, um, and it's basically the the primary logo and it just like has like a faded look to it and I think that they're pretty cool. But yeah, um, it just looks like you've worn it twenty times. Um, yeah, kind of. Um, I don't wear them as much as I used to, though. I kind of, like I said, it was more of a thing I did back in high school. So, I I mean, I haven't really grown since then, so that's why I still have them all. And I still wear them occasionally. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm more into, like, the band t-shirts. That's another thing I collect. I have a bunch of band t-shirts. I'm like, my draw is, like, overflowing with them. That I like. And I like that, too, because, like, even if you get a band t-shirt of... of particular band um let's say journey for example you could always get like another type of band shirt that's still journey but like with a different album cover on it or something um so it still makes it kind of unique i i have like 
two Green Day uh, shirts. No, mm-hmm. three. I have the sweatshirt with uh, the Dookie album. I have another one. I have another one with I forgot what the album cover was, and then I have uh, American Idiot. Have um, you seen my Metallica one? I feel like you would like that. I have seen it. Um, I like Metallica, but I don't know if I like it enough to get a T-shirt. I do. Um, well, I mean, I I really like the shirt just because I like the design on it. It's also like pastel, but also is faded and has holes in it. Right. Yeah, I, I've seen that. It's so, a pretty cool shirt. Yeah, and Metallica has a pretty cool, cool logo. Most um, of their songs like are very long, though. They're like seven minutes. Yeah, seven to ten yeah. minutes. Yeah, they're very long songs. Um, another one I, I like um, that I, I've started doing more and more is shoes. Um, more specifically, Vans. I've been getting more vans. and more Vans. I only have four pairs at the moment, um, but I do want to get more. But again, shoes are kind of expensive, so I don't do it too often. I also have a Shoes pair of... are pretty much like the equivalent of my lounge fly bags. Yes. Yeah, Maybe, you're... actually, my bags might be a little more expensive. The difference between us with shoes, though, is yours are more exotic That's than mine. True. I have burger shoes coming in. I'm so fucking excited. When the hell did you get that? <laughs> You'll have to see. It's gonna... Okay, listen. There's sh- I, I love collecting shoes, too. And... But I think your shoes are a lot more practical (laughs) than most of mine. Because I have one specific outfit that I can wear with these shoes. Otherwise, the shoes will not make sense. And maybe, I don't know if you can They sound like they don't make sense already. Maybe, hold on. Keep rambling on while I find the picture of them. But, and then maybe you can, like, take a picture of the shoes and, like, edit it in the video. So if someone's watching it on YouTube, they can see. But they're like sandwich shoes. <laughs> I like how you take me talking as rambling, but okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry. I will say with my Vans, um, I'm starting to go for more like a little flashy of a design. Like I have those, um, like it, I I guess they're considered like skateboarding ones, but like they have like a, a pattern that go that transitions from red to orange to yellow. Uh, and then on the other side, purple, blue, and green, which I, I like, and it's like checkered pattern. Those are my favorite that I have at the moment. Um, and I have some called standard the... ones. Wait, what's uh, the image cutter thing called? It's like, no, like the oh snipping tool. That's what I was looking for. Sorry. Um. I mean, you could have done this a- after the show, but okay. But I-, I want you to, I want to get your live reaction. All right. Um, you could also just send the link in Discord. You didn't no. have to take the picture, but all right. Anyways, um, I have three pairs of Adidas, uh, one pair of Nikes, and and a pair of dress shoes, or like kind of like business casual shoes and dress shoes. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> I like. I mean, like it's up and coming. Um, it's expensive though, so that's why I don't do it too often. Yeah. Um, and some of my Adidas is kind of stinky. Only, only one of them is kind of new, so the other two are probably gonna have to get thrown out soon anyway. Um, yeah, that's okay though. Do you have your picture ready or? Yeah, no? I, I sent it. <laughs> All right, let me see. <laughs> um. It's in. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> I I don't see the point in that, but whatever. You want to waste your money. <laughs> Describe what they look like. They just look like a sandwich from Scooby-Doo. <laughs> they do actually kind of look like a Scooby-Doo sandwich. Oh yeah. my god, that's funny. I'm so excited. Anyway, like... um... <laughs> Some other some other things. Um, I used to collect model cars, mostly like older models. Um, I don't do it anymore. I only have five uh, that I have here. One of them, one of them's a, a more current Mustang, but the the rest of them, the other four, just kind of older cars. Like one's a Beetle, one's a, a Cobra, and the other's a Corvette Stingray. Didn't you also used to collect like the signs, like the um, like uh, rustic that was, kind of signs? That was that was something I started, but uh, 
I only got two of them because no one's gotten me any more since. Go and I, I probably should buy some myself. Yeah. Like I want I want to make this one part of my wall just all all signs. Um so I have like one Well the first one I got isn't a rusty one. It just says Ford Mustang. Um mm. with the Mustang going across. That's yeah. pretty cool. It's like a a metal sign. And then the other one I got, I don't know if you got it for me or my mom got it for me for Christmas two years ago. I it's don't like think this, I did. It says Root US 66. Yeah. And it has like rust stain, like fake rust stains on it. That looks pretty cool. Um, and like I said, I could get like maybe five more and just put it on this whole strip of my wall. Yeah. Going, uh, uh, vertically, I I think that would be pretty cool. I just uh, Hobby Lobby, I know has a couple of them. Oh, yeah, they had there. a ton. Cause I remember I was gonna get you one, but I remember that Christmas I already got you so much. Cause I think that was the Christmas I got you the AirPods. And, the uh, Polaroid, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, well, I already spent enough money. <laughs> yeah, that that was a big Christmas. Yeah. Um Yeah, no, I, I would I would love to have more of those. Um and something else I used to collect was uh hats. Um hmm. this is where superheroes were a thing again for me. I had Thor, Green Lantern, and then you like for my birthday last year got me Spider Man. I also um, got you A C D C I think. Not a hat, no. You got me a shirt. No, uh-huh. don't, isn't don't you have like a little black hat that has ACDC oh, on it? Yes, like that a little one. snapback or whatever it's called. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I wear I wear that one when I go to the gym. Nice. Um, yeah, I got that little ACDC. I I keep that one separate from the rest of them, um, because it doesn't fit where the they are in my room anymore. Yeah. Um, I miss wearing hats, but I think some of the ones I got when I was younger were too big for me. So if yeah. I were to collect hats again, I need to get the right one. Because, like, I didn't like snapbacks at first because I just thought, like, if it was, if I made it too tight, having the band sticking out was just kind of, like, annoying. Um, So I, I would always try to get, like, the fitted hats. But then, like, the problem with that is if it's too big, then it's, like, oof. And if it's too small, it squeeze your head. So snapbacks uh, are good yeah. because they're adjustable. And the Spider-Man one you got me, I think, is a snapback. And honestly, yeah. I don't, I don't complain about it anymore. And uh, I think if I were to collect them, I would just get snapbacks from now on. Yeah. I, I like them, and I wish uh, I do want to wear them more. Go for it. Um. Other than that, the the other things that I would like to collect more, um, are wallets. I think wallets are cool. Mm. Um, well, you, you you have trouble with wallets though. Well, like, my problem is I picked the uh, I picked two big wallets. Oh uh, yeah. My only wallet that was good was my original wallet. That was actually pretty small, and I probably should have. From now on, I'm gonna stick with a small wallet. But I I want to collect wallets. I don't know. It, it, it's like rings with me. I I want to like switch them out. Switch out using different ones. I know that seems so weird, but like, nah, I I just feel like professional with it for some reason. Um, and then the last thing is video games. Um, obviously I have a lot of video games in my Steam library, and uh, back when I played on my PlayStation, I mean back on my PlayStation it was mostly Call of Duty, but there were some other games like Assassin's Creed, um, some of the sports games like NHL, yeah, uh, Madden. Um, there was also Little Big Planet. Um, oh God, what was the other game? Not Uncharted, but uh, some other game. But yeah. Oh, uh, Last of Us and a couple of others. Um, but even on Steam, like I have so many games, but like I don't have nearly as many as I should have. Calling myself a gamer, and there's so many games that I still haven't played. A lot of single player games that I haven't played that I want to play yeah. and I want to get into. Um, and I just want to have a big collection of games and, and be more well rounded in that respect. Um, I mean, I know like our upload schedule with our video game content hasn't been the best but we've recorded so much gameplay of just two games i have all that footage to go through but i still want to play like so many other games and well, if i do my epic gaming video. if i if i do go through all the other games and record them um they it will probably take a while to get there because yeah. i kind of want to go in, in the order that i recorded and yes. yeah your epic gaming i mean I'll edit it, but I'm not sure how many people are going to want to watch. You know what? The thing is, I made it, so now you don't really even have to edit it. It's just, like, the first two. So, basically, all I'm doing is I'm just recording myself playing Wizard 101, but 
I'm not gonna be talking or anything in it. So like I'll I'll literally just watch it because I I personally love the music and the sounds and everything from the game. So the whole point of it is to just like um just listen to it. And if you wanna like go along the story, because I'm gonna let all the characters speak and say their lines and that kind of thing. So if you wanna just watch that, that's pretty much all I'm gonna do it gonna do. So. Pretty much what I'm going to need you to edit is just, like, the first few videos and just take me talking out of it. And, like, piece together some videos. Well, I, that's a problem. I didn't know that that's what you wanted. That you wanted the music of the game and the dialogue from that. Because yeah. if you're talking when the dialogue or the music is going on, I can't... At least I don't know how to with the software I have to eliminate your voice from the track. Because when you recorded the audio is picked up in a single track. If when you recorded, you had separate audio tracks, then it I would be I thought I did. I, I'm pretty sure all you have is a single file. Because, <laughs> uh, like, um, yeah. I, I wouldn't know how to say that. Like, because I know when I record, it, like, picks up my mic as one thing and then the game thing. I'm sure another. there's a way of doing it in OBS. I, I've seen the setting where you go to audio tab and you could change, like, the settings for each audio track. And I'm sure when you go to record, you could say, um, record, uh, save file with separate audio tracks. But I don't think you did that. Uh, and again, I didn't know you were doing this because you just randomly. I remember I was at the gym and you texted me, hey, I need you to edit this, uh, edit my audio out. Um, and I just assumed that you want me to just, you know, cut it out in those f few spots. But if something was like, if you were talking while the characters were talking, I'm going to have to cut out the whole dialogue, too. <laughs> but, um, God we'll, we'll damn see. it. We'll see. I mean, look, I, I'm not I'm not trying to shit on the game, but I just don't know how many people are going to want to watch it. <laughs> Care, I'll watch it. Well, unfortunately, you boosting our stats will not help us on YouTube. <laughs> I'll, I'll do like what I do with Stan the Waterman. I'll just keep it on constant repeat. I think you should, um, a good idea for you to record uh, and post online, I think, would be playing like a playthrough of a game like Until Dawn. Though. I think but that would be play, more entertaining. But it's a playthrough of Wizard 101. I mean, sure. It's I mean, I, I, I'm, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'm just saying. I mean, look. Who knows? Maybe, maybe we'll get a fan base that likes. It. I mean, you we know already what? know. We already know one person that's gonna watch it. Maybe. You know what? I'm gonna make my own Wizard 101 channel and call it Wizard 101 Mandy, and I am going to become the most epic and famous YouTuber there is. Why don't you just add it onto the current one you have with the The Last of Us? No. That and that's another interesting game you should record. <laughs> I haven't even played it yet. Or, oh no, not The Last of Us, um, The Evil Within. Uh, yeah. I want to record all the Evil Within. And you should probably Within. go and finish Outlast, too. Yeah, that too. <laughs> I think I think you should do all of that before Wizard 101. Hey! <laughs> but the thing is, I'm doing this for me, too, because I, I've never, like, taken the time and actually, like, listened to the story and the dialogue. I know, I know but what I'm saying is you could just do that without recording it. <laughs> I want to record it. Okay. Uh, I mean... You you tell me. If you want it on our channel, I'll put it on our channel. If you want to put it on your own channel, I'll edit it for you anyways, and you can upload it on your own Well, channel. if you can't take out me talking, then I'm probably going to have to start all over. Then start all over. I mean, how far did you really get? I'm sure you're still in Wizard City. Hey! It takes a That's while. Fine. There's a lot of dialogue. Are you doing all the side quests, too? Or is your well, place so, just the main quest? Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do all the main quests first. And then make, like, separate videos for doing the side quest. So, like, I'll label what's a side quest video and a main quest video. So okay. Like, so like, I, I got you. Yeah, so I'm going to first do all the main quests of the worlds. So like, once I finish Wizard City, I'll go back and do the side quests. Okay, well, uh, let me catch up on all the other recordings, and uh, I'll try to edit your gameplay as well and try to get it out there. Um, I mean, I could, like, I don't want to just post a bunch of Phasmophobia and, yeah. and then all of a sudden that. Maybe I'll break it up. Um, it's just it's a lot of footage to go through. Um, it takes a lot of time, plus with everything else going on. But, um, yeah, I'll, I'll try doing it. Um... 
Okay. Uh, we're almost at an hour here. Uh, we're pretty much at an hour. Um, you want to end it here? I believe we'll stay on track with recording these. <laughs> yeah. Um, I really want to. Um, we're we're gonna try to do a couple. Um, have them ready to go. Um, obviously we just want to re-listen to them, make sure everything's okay. Yeah. Uh, before uploading, because there was a time where. Uh, the audio got a little corrupted, so I ha- uh, had to cut like a part of it out. Um, so just want to make sure it sounds okay, and then just put it up there. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, um, I just uploaded a video like two days ago, um, and I had some trouble editing that, but I managed to fix the problems in it. Um, and I'm gonna try working on editing the next part. So hopefully we'll have a this podcast coming out very soon after recording this and then having uh, another video up for you guys. Right? Yep. All right. Good. Um, thank you for watching. This has been the Knuckleheads Podcast. Thank you. Bye.